good to come, dog. It was the right decision. All right. Don't really have much of a choice, but the father always had a choice. When I was 16, my friend dared me to douse my face with acid. It was stupid. I wanted to impress him, and I did it without thinking about it. But I did have a choice. Who, who are you? I'm a man, just like you. And I want to tell you a little bit about what I do for a living. It might be of interest to you. <coughs> I'm the founder of a company that specializes in abuse prevention for pets. I love pets more than anything in this world. I can't stand the thought of them getting hurt. Most people buy pets without considering the implications. They love them at first and care for them, but after a few days, they lose interest and start neglecting them. They stop loving them. That's when the dynamics of abuse set in. <laughs> Boy, I've never abused my dog, so I don't see why you... Let me finish. Rather than taking action when the harm is done and it's basically too late, I favor prevention. I only realized I loved my face after it had been burned with acid. Before, it was just my face. I only started loving it again when it had partially disappeared. Do you follow? Not really. But man gets accustomed, allured by things rapidly used to everything. You get a new jacket, you're happy to wear it. It brings you joy for a while, but once you get accustomed, it stops altogether. On the other hand, that jacket is slowly becoming you. The desire ignites again inside of you. Suddenly, you miss that jacket, and you love that jacket again. <laughs> Same goes for shoes. Or no, it's a simple concept. My company kidnaps pets owners they had a chance to realize how much they love them. <laughs> After a few days, they turn the pets and they love them just as much as they did the first day. Sometimes even more. You kidnapped Paul? Correct. Why? Oh, well, wait, I just told you why. No, and why me? Oh, completely random choice. Sick. Who do you think you are, huh? Well, look, look, can I, can I please have my dog back so I can love him a bit more? Is that it? That's what would happen usually, yes. But I have to tell you, a funny thing happened with Paul. It's, it's interesting, eh? In seven years of service, this has never happened. It's quite embarrassing. You see, the technician assigned to Paul's kidnapping yesterday morning lost control of the vehicle. I don't know how or why. The van crashed and the technician perished in the flames. Paul was in a cage in the back. Oh, oh no. Oh no, you don't need to worry about that. The police report was crystal clear on that subject. No dog bones were recovered from the scene. Cage door was found open. This leads us to believe that Paul successfully escaped the fire. <laughs> you don't need to worry. The cage was open. He has to be alive. There is hope. And I hired a top level detective to find him. <laughs> oh no. Oh, also, I forgot to give you this. A copy of my book. This should help. Thanks, but I already have it. No, no. This is volume two. Forget the first one. I completely denigrate it. Volume two is much more mature. You'll see. Amongst other things, I explored the subject of telepathic communication with your dog. You can stay in contact even when you're apart. It's groundbreaking. You learn a lot about yourself and that own nature. Still communicate with him if he's dead? 